Hello folks, Slightly Slanted Sleuth. I just got uh, some more corroborating evidence or confirmation on what I've been talking about. Came across this website called uh, Orion Zone, and it's got just what it says. Everything Orion. I didn't know there was much, this much information on it. Now the weird thing is, is that most of these things that... I've been coming across, I learned before I've seen these papers, stuff like this, you know? Okay, here, just real quick, we're going to read this real quick. Now, what does this sound like to you? If someone ventured into one of these, okay, here we go. A researcher from the University of California, Berkeley, claims that there are certain types of black holes in the cosmos that can press the reset button on history, so to speak. According to experts, these black holes have the ability to reset the past completely and offer an infinite number of probable or possible futures. In the real world, the past uniquely determines the future. If a physicist knows how to the universe where it began, he has the necessary means to calculate its future for all time and all space. However, a UC Berkeley mathematician has found some types of black holes in which these, this law does not apply. If someone ventured into one of these relatively benign black holes, he could survive, but his past would be erased, and he could have an infinite number of possible futures. Such claims have been made in the past, and physicists have invoked a strong cosmic sensor to explain it. These are the two types, actually. The weak censorship hypothesis and the strong cosmic censorship hypothesis. Kind of weird that the word censorship is involved in both of them. Experts suggest that there are certain barriers within black holes deeper than the event horizon beyond which phys physics is entirely canceled out and nothing can be predicted from there. Some argue that this barrier seals off troublesome singularities from the rest of space and time, which in turn prevents their lawlessness from becoming a pressing issue. Note, science alert. Now, hear me out here. We say we're in a matrix. A lot of people say we're in a soul recycler. A lot of people say we're in a, a soul farm. Is this how you create a soul farm for energy? Are we in an energy soul farm? Destined to return back and get erased again? However, they note a second cosmic censorship also exists. This one, a stronger version of cosmic censorship, holds the idea that physical lawlessness does not exist. This would require or the barrier to disappear so that physics could live on. After studying non-rotating objects called Reisner da -da 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 black holes, Hintz and his colleagues argue that theoretically these mysterious black holes would have a barrier called a Conchi horizon. Beyond this point, say experts, there is no cause and effect inside this warped landscape, and time and space are smeared smoothly into an infinite instant. A space-time diagram of a gravitational collapse of a charged spherical star to form a charged black hole. An observer traveling across the event horizon will eventually encounter the Chauncey horizon, the boundary of the region of space-time that can be predicted from the initial data. Hintz and his colleagues found that a region of space-time denoted by a question mark cannot be predicted from the initial data in a universe with accelerating expansion like our own. This violates the principle of strong cosmic censorship. This means that it is there where the past no longer influences the future. If someone would somehow end up venturing into these black holes, he could survive, but his past would be completely obliterated and he would face a number of different possible futures. It is no longer uniquely determined by 
full knowledge of the initial conditions, Hintz said. That is why it's very troublesome. What life would be like in a space where the future was unpredictable is unclear. No physicist is going to travel into a black hole and measure it. This is a math question. But from that point of view, this makes Einstein's equations mathematically more interesting, he said. This is a question one can only study mathematically, but it has physical, almost philosophical implications, which make it very cool. This conclusion corresponds to a several failure of determinism in general relatively that relativity that cannot be taken lightly in view of the importance of modern cosmology, of accelerating expansion, said his colleagues. Now, the synchronicities and the things that pop up daily for me are just incredible, folks. Here, I've got another, another one for you. See that, folks? And for those of you who continue or think that I'm talking out my uh, rear about the Anu, this is the Anu. The Anu can scarcely be said to be a thing, though it is the material out of which all things physical are composed. It is formed by the flow of the life force and vanishes with its ebb. The life force is known to theosophists as Fohet, the force of which all the physical plane forces are differentiations of. When this force arises in space, that is, when Fohet digs holes in space, apparent to form an apparent void, which must be filled with substance of some kind of inconceivable tenuity, Anu appear. That is the force of the positive and the negative. Okay, and here's another thing why I'm saying that Earth could be Nibiru. See the Earth symbol in alchemy right here? It's a cross, circle and a cross. And here's a trapezium open star cluster located in an M42 in Orion's sword. It is a open star cluster that has a black hole at the center of it. So it's the inverted version of the Earth. Earth is this with the circle with the cross in the middle. Trapezium is the cross with the circle in the middle. Planet of the crossing. Okay. This is the eye in the triangle. I've shown you guys this before. Everything is a Fibonacci sequence that starts at the trapezium open star cluster. This is in the Barnard's loop right around Orion. And here's another crazy uh, correlation. Could CERN be Orion Stargate? That would be the case, especially for the Large Hadron Collider which was, has attracted so much attention, not just from scientists, but also from suspicious conspiracy theorists. Yes, it has. Went online in 2008. And by 2008, I knew the moon was a key component of the design, but it wasn't until this year, 2015, that the rabbit hole finally led me to Orion. The LHC, I would now suggest, is an Orion Stargate. They whisper knowledge that it is cosmic, extra-dimensional, and mysterious, just below the threshold of reality. The whispers are just loud enough to hint that the secrets are there, but quiet enough to make sure it's up to us to act on our subconscious awareness and decide to follow the white rabbit wherever it goes. The path to truth is indeed bottomless rabbit hole. 
how deep we can go depends on our desire, focus, dedication, intuition, creativity, balance, etc., etc. We need to know how to think with our heart and mind and not what to think, which any programmable machine can do. Only then we begin to hear more clearly the whispers telling us where to dig for treasure. And that's precisely what I've been doing lately, folks. Meditation has led me to this stuff. Now you see this uh, layout of CERN here. This is the Malkuth part of the deal, okay? Now, this has got to be part of the matrix. Look at this. See how they, the moon and the earth are the same size in proportion. The orbit, the sun Venus ascending node. All this can be found up with the link in the in the description box below. So you guys can look all this stuff up. And here's the galactic equator, galactic meridian, sun position, ecliptic plane of our solar system. And this is on December 9th. This is when I looked into the sun, guys. And this is when I got this information. I swear to you, this is how I did it. This last year, while I was looking into the sun, on December 9th. What we'll do now is instead of Earth's orbit, okay, that's just telling you the makeup of it, and I'm not going to waste your time. Remember where our solar system is. Well, I don't know how this happened. Do you remember where our solar system is, folks? In the galaxy. Now, I used to remember it to be on the uh, edge of the ga galaxy on the Sagittarius arm and this video particular video that he's referencing here is uploaded on January 30th 2009 by Fluff Machine I'm going to look him up right now See if that video is still on there. It looks like I'm not going to find it, so. It says that you are here. This is exactly where I remember us being, on the outskirts of the Milky Way galaxy. Here's the large Magellan cloud and the Sigdeg and other galaxies. I remember us being way out here. I don't know how this picture survived. How did this, how did this come here? Now, guess where we are now, folks? To... NASA and all the astronomers and everybody today, this picture is completely wrong. However, this is deadly accurate. This is exactly the way I remember it. So let me show you the old Earth, the old Earth theory, the old Earth theory, the multiverse is a theory in which our universe is not the only one. Instead, many universes exist parallel to each other. These distinct universes within the multiverse theory are called parallel universes. This means there are copies of you sitting right here, right now, listening to this. But in other universes, there are other copies of you that are doing other things in other universes. Putting changes to the Earth's seeming to have moved larger or smaller, or even full countries and even bodies of water and land. Categorization of theories. The reports consist of city locations seeming to be different, bodies of water and land masses either becoming much larger or smaller, or even full countries and even continents seeming to have moved to different locations or having vanished completely. The majority of these find to a different parallel one, or our old earth was destroyed in 2012, and now our consciousness lives on within a massive computer simulation. 
Perhaps it is a combination of both. Or is it simply a bad case of Mandela effect with our brains remembering the wrong locations and details of our own globe? Let's now take a look. According to old earthers, New Zealand used to be northeast of Australia. As you can see, it is now southeast of Australia. Many claim that Australia was more isolated away from Papua New Guinea and Indonesia, leaving ample room in the north. What is the true land down under? Apparently, the answer is New Zealand, not Australia. Number two, the Northern Ice Cap. The Northern Ice Cap at the North Pole no longer exists. This one tends to hit home for a lot of people who remember spinning their globe as a child with two polar ice caps, one at the south being Antarctica and another circle of ice at the top where the North Pole was. Greenland also existed on Old Earth, so this should not be confused with being the missing northern ice cap. Number three, South America. South America used to be much more directly underneath North America and not so far east out into the Atlantic Ocean in South America and Africa, while drastically increasing the size of the Pacific Ocean. Number four, Detroit. Detroit's orientation to Windsor, Ontario has now changed. Downtown Detroit is now north or northwest. I don't know how this happened, but the way I remember our solar system, this is a 1997 by Jerry Logrigus. It says that you are here. This is exactly where I remember us being, on the outskirts of the Milky Way galaxy. Here's the large Magellan cloud and the Sigdeg and other galaxies. I remember us being way out here. I don't know how this picture survived. Milky Way galaxy. Which, in other words, this is where our present location is. I remember us being exactly on the opposite side of the Milky Way galaxy. We're in the Orion What's interesting Arno. is that, if you remember, we can't see through the galactic center. Radio telescopes try, but we can't. Act dab in the middle of the Milky Way galaxy. Anybody remember that way? I don't. I remember us being on the Sagittarius arm, Me and too. we are way on the outskirts of the Milky Way galaxy. Doing that project. Okay, now. We have any veterans of this the man US I trusted? Navy in here? I put my face Not in. Navy? Army. Thought. Well, the military in general is a truth, subculture of our American culture. This brings me to the golden mean spiral, which is the divine proportion, which simply is the ratio of phi, 1 to 1.618033. This is why we see the spiral graphs, the the pictographs of spirals on rock glyphs and this is why the Hopi put all their mesas in the configuration of Orion I just showed you the spiral that is in in the uh, redshift app that goes around the golden mean spiral starts the Hopi place of emergence arcs through Orabi oldest continuous inhabited community on the continent settled Swings through the third eye chakra, then continues its sweep through the middle of the horns of Taurus. And as you know, uh, horns are uh, affiliated with uh, godliness. The correlation is akin to that of Orion Osiris in Egypt where the three main Giza pyramids represent his belt. The Orion Mystery by Robert Bouval and Andrea Gilbert in Sumer circa 3000 BC, Orion was worshipped as God Ninurta, also called Nengersu, according to place, son of Enlil. Not only was he known as the god of fields and canals, he who brings fertility, but also as the god of war and the hunt, who brings death. Keep that in mind now. At one point, he was so aggressive that nature herself struggled against him, the very stones battling his ire. 
quite significantly, significantly, Ninurta is also referred to as a champion of celestial gods. Now exhibited at Lover, a Sumeristella fragment from the beginning of the third millennia depicts Ningursa with the classic Orion club in his right hand. Oh, and an eagle with outstretched wings in his left hand. However, in other representations of this de deity, his weapon is shown as being flanked by two S-shaped snakes. This, of course, reminds us of the Caduceus, of the Greek god Hermes. It has been said that there are two water serpents coiling the earth from north to south pole. On each of the poles sits a warrior god on the serpent's head and tail, now and then communicating messages of our conduct and behavior toward each other, now and then releasing light pressure, which causes the great serpents to move, resetting Earth's movements, a message also commanding nature to warn us by her actions that time is getting short and so we must correct ourselves. If we refuse to heed the warning, the warrior gods will let go of the serpents and we will all perish. They will say, we do not deserve the land given to us because we are careless. The warrior twins are called Pokwegoya, god of solidity, and Polagawoya, god of sound. The former sits in the North Pole while the latter sits in the South Pole. In other versions of the myth, the duel li lives in the Grand Canyon, location of the Ripper Whirlpools at the heretofore discussed Gate of Masu's house. Although the suffix Hoya refers to youth, meaning literally son of the sun, it is known as an elder, literally water dripping sun, is known as the younger deity. Never functioning independently each of each other, these two figures frequently assume a mischie mischievous character. Wow, and I just had a, a, an epiphany when Thoth states the 40 and the 2. Here it is. However, the, this dyad also plays the role of cultural heroes, sometimes performing such Herculean tasks as slaying of monsters. Not only were these two twins responsible for the creation of mountains and canyons, but they also monitored the vibratory centers of the earth, such as the vortex points mentioned above. Forty, their primary duty, however, was to assure proper rotation of the planet. The dual spiral is represented by the pair of water serpents, each assigned to its polar station. So that's the 40 and the 2. And here's how they describe the, the magnetic dynamo that is the black hole. The spiral force of the Pokwega Hoya, which turns the Arctic ice, is so powerful that it extends into space. In other words, the spiral force coming from Pokwega Hoya is spiraling into space over the North Pole and making a giant invisible tornado going up into space. The same is happening in the South Pole. With this spiral force, Pokwega Hoya is making a great a giant invisible tornado going up into space. These giant invisible tornadoes are different from other tornadoes in two ways. First, they stay in one position, always over the poles, never moving from place to place. And second, they are turning more slowly than other tornadoes, but always in a spiral motion, like a giant funnel. This is how the planet breathes. In essence, the iconographic spiral unites terra firma and the firmament. The term covenant is derived from the Latin covenir, which literally means to come together or to unite. Wow. The deeper significance of the spiral to provide the ark, and that this instance spelled a C of the covenant by which the worlds of earth and sky are bound. The hope, we hope you believe that the human race has passed through three different worlds and life ways since the beginning. At the end of each prior world, human life has been purified or punished by the great spirit Masu, due mainly to corruption, greed, and turning away from the great spirit's teachings. The last great destruction was the flood, which destroyed all but a few faithful ones who asked and received a permission from the Great Spirit to live with him in his new land. The Great Spirit said, it's up to you. If you are willing to live 
my poor, humble, and simple w life way. It is hard, but if you agree to live according to my teachings and instructions, if you never lose faith in life I shall give you, you may come and live with me. The Hopi and all who were saved from the great flood made a sacred covenant with the great serpent at that time. We hope he made an oath that we will never turn away from him. For us, the creator laws never change or break down. 42. Many Hopi elders must surely feel the world's spirals are wobbling out of control, as prophesied. Yes. Okay, in conclusion, guys, I'd like to say that... Uh, This is more than coincidence. This is uh, synchronicity. All of this stuff is true. You know, there's too many co corroborating points. I mean, they just line up too, too good. But now, my dilemma I'm having right now is since everything is uh, in the word, everything is in the symbol, everything is, is uh, shown but hidden, the trapezium is that indication that we are in a trap and it's easy to trap us. Mm. Now, is this an elaborate setup that are we living on a copy of Earth? As crazy as that may sound, I just showed you that we moved from the outer uh, edges of our galaxy to the Orion arm, which I never even knew existed. I thought it was a spur before and I swear to God I just looked it up. I don't know. I don't know. It was like 10 15 years ago. So I guess it wasn't just looked it up, but Science people will tell you today that we Always existed on the Orion arm, but I I dispute that I'll go against that with all my heart the Berenstein bears all that Mandela stuff that all harkens to you know, the Bible's even been changed. There's the word Bible, or bottles in the Bible now. Bottles, guys, where it was wineskins previously. And I think even the word coach is in the Bible. But anyway, is CERN a Stargate to Orion? I don't know, but I do know that whatever this system is, it does go through Orion. Whether it's nefarious, benevolent, or both. And uh, the whole Nibiru thing being of another planet, I think it's the Nibiru is the duat or the in-between or the uh, the portal, I suppose. Or it is Earth. Because we're having chemtrails. We've been having chemtrails for as long as I can remember now. They say they date back to the 50s. Now, if we were waiting on a passage of a planet, wouldn't, have, wouldn't, wouldn't it have happened by now? I know. I have 400 videos on my channel of them. Of Nibiru in the sky. When the whole time I've been standing on it. Nibiru simply means... Nibiru also transliterated as Nibiru or Nibaru is a term of the Akkadian language, translating to crossing or point of transition, especially of rivers, i.e. river crossings or ferry boats. The term Nibiru in cuneiform spelled Nibiru or Nibirum refers to the equinox and the astronomical objects associated with it. The establishment of the Nibiru point is described in Tablet 5 of the creation epic Enuma Elish when Marduk, Marduk fixed the locations of Nibiru, Enlil, and Ea in the sky. That's uh, referring to them as planets or stars. Nibiru is Marduk's star, which he made appear in the heavens. The stars of heaven let him, Nibiru, set their course. Let him shepherd all the gods like sheep. Nibiru, which is said to have occupied the passageways of heaven and earth, because everyone above and below asked Nibiru if they cannot find the that they cannot find the passage. 
Nibiru is Marduk's star, which the gods in heaven caused to be visible. Nibiru stands as a post at the turning point. The others say of Nibiru, the post, the one who crosses the middle of the sea without calm. May his name be Nibiru, for he takes up the center of it. The path of the stars of the sky should be kept unchanged. Now, guys, that is the meaning of it. Are we not at a uh, Nibiru point right now? The gods in heaven will make it appear when we're at that point of transition. We are there. And if we keep wasting our energy into finding this and not putting all of our hope and energy into love and, and cherishing everybody in every moment we have, I'm afraid things are going to get much worse. With that, guys, I've taken up enough of your time. Thank you. And if you haven't, please subscribe. We are all part fractals of the whole and the whole all in the same. We may be living in a trap, but I believe we can love our way out of it. Love, peace, chicken grease. Thank you.